everybody, good afternoon, welcome back. It is Sunday, the 15th of November, <clears throat> about 2 o'clock in the afternoon here in Northeast Pennsylvania, and uh, this is not the dark dystopian car ride home that you guys are used to, um, mostly because I need to read from some materials here as we, uh, as we progress through this. I've got some research material, some notes scribbled on it, and some things at the end to go over. So, pardon me, of course my nose itches the minute I start making a video, right? <clears throat> I want you to bear in mind, this goes back 19 years, it'll be 20 years in June. The other thing I want you to do is, every time... Well, let me uh, get started. Operation Dark Winter, code name for a senior level terrorist attack simulation from June 22nd, 23rd, 2001. It was designed to carry out a mock version of a covert widespread smallpox attack on the United States. And then it gives you the uh, people who were involved in it. I don't know if they're still relevant today. However, Please take note of this. They are from the Johns Hopkins Center for Civilian Biodefense Strategies. Now, Johns Hopkins, if you remember, was known for the, uh, the COVID outbreak map. Um, these guys were all, uh, they were as well as the Center for Strategic International Studies. Um, they were all involved in the COVID analysis of outbreak monitoring and things like that. So without further ado, let's get into it, right? I want you to do something for me though. Every time I say smallpox in your head, think COVID-19. Mind you, this, this operation is 20 years ago, almost. It was high level. Um, you know, some of us heard like little whisperings of it when it was going on, just that this was going on in case of emergency break glass. Also need a uh, a beverage because this could go on for a while. Uh, oh yeah, be forewarned, this might be a long video. So, what was the objective? It was focused on evaluating the inadequacies of a national emergency response during the use of biological weapon against the American populace. Also, when I say biological weapon, I want you to, in your mind, think pandemic. The exercise was intended to establish preventative measures and response strategies by increasing governmental and public awareness of the magnitude and potential of such a threat posed by biological weapon. So, I don't much remember this going back to 2001 as far as being it being public knowledge or anything like that. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. Um, at the time, I was still in the Marines and I was still in college, so... Your mileage may vary on that. You could also say, if you wanted to uh, reword that, the exercise was intended to or reword it and push it forward to present day, right? You could say the exercise was intended to test, question mark, preventative measures and response strategies by increasing governmental and public awareness of the magnitude and potential of such threat posed by pandemic. You could say it that way, right? You'll understand as I go through this why I'm going through it as slowly as I am. So what was the scenario? It was a simulated scenario involved <clears throat> as an initial localized outbreak. Smallpox. Remember what we're substituting that for, because we're fast forwarding 20 years now. On Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, and additional smallpox attack cases in Georgia and Pennsylvania. Now, I have not to date looked up smallpox numbers in Georgia and Oklahoma City, but I know Pennsylvania's numbers going through the roof. 
simulation was then designed to spiral out of control. Sound familiar? This would create a contingency in which the National Security Council struggles to determine the origin of the attack as well as deal with containing the spreading virus by not being able to keep pace with the disease's rate of spread. Let's try that again and replace a few words. This would create a contingency in which the National Security Council, CDC, struggles to determine the origin of the outbreak as well as deal with containing the spreading virus. Just saying. Think about that for a second. It was a fish market, then it was a biolab, then it was a biolab that got into a fish market, then it was a biolab again. Mind you, Fauci was in the CDC back then. The disastrous contingencies that would result in a massive loss of civilian life <clears throat> were used to exploit the weakness of U.S. healthcare infrastructure and its ability to handle such a threat. Let's unpack that. So there was no contingency that we know of for COVID-19, right? So we could say maybe the disastrous policy. Disastrous policy. 20 years ago. <clears throat> the contingen contingencies, policies, were also meant to address widespread panic that would emerge. Think about your grocery stores last March. Think about your gun jobs last March. Think about how long it took to see toilet paper back on the shelf after the widespread panic that would emerge and which would result in mass social breakdown and much violence. So let's go back and unpack that sentence for a second. The result in mass social breakdown and mob violence. We've seen these things, right? We've seen these things not as a direct correlation to our pandemic attack, but as an exigent circumstance down the line. Exploits would also include many difficulties that the media would face when providing American citizens with necessary information regarding safety procedures. <clears throat> I have a note attached to that that said, or they could be complicit in the panic. Because in this case, they were complicit in the panic, and they are still complicit in the panic. They're using political talking points from the Joe Biden camp to ramp up fear and ramp up panic and panic buying and things like that, right? It's almost like Joe Biden knew what he was saying when we were going in, when he said we're going into a dark winter. All right, we haven't seen mass social breakdown yet, but we definitely have seen mob violence. We've definitely seen the media providing American citizens with the necessary information regarding safety procedures, right? Wear a mask, be socially distant. Don't have too many people at your house for the holidays this year. So what were the findings? <clears throat> An attack on the United States with a biological weapon could threaten vital national security interests. Well, we've seen national security, well, we've seen military assets get reallocated to deal with the COVID thing. Um, but we haven't seen it on a large scale. We saw two hospital ships, one the Comfort, 
that went to New York, and I believe the other one was the Mercy that went to L.A. In addition, the possibility of mass civilian casualties, which the media is telling us we're having massive casualties, yet they're not telling us the number of casualties. You have to go look for that on your own. Casualty versus infection. <clears throat> In addition to the possibility of mass civilian casualties, Dark Winter outlined the possible breakdown in essential institutions resulting in the loss of confidence in government. Sounds like the Biden campaign to me. Undermine confidence in government and sneak your way in there. But we'll get, we'll, we'll continue a little bit. Followed by civil disorder, sounds familiar, right? And a violation of democratic process by authorities attempting to restore order. There's a lot of us that think an election just got stolen by mail-in voting. Just saying. Just saying. Shortages of vaccines and other drugs affected the response available to contain the epidemic, as well as the ability of political leaders to offer reassurance to the American people. So, there was no vaccine, right, for COVID. There was Operation Warp Speed to get a vaccine in an expedited amount of time. There's no vaccine. And that has also been used to undermine the confidence in the government. This led to great public anxiety and flight by desperate people to get vaccinated, and it had a significant effect on the decisions taken by the political leadership. Think about that. Think about that. How many of your states are completely open at this point? I know mine's not. <clears throat> Where was I? Oh, yeah. How many people are in a rush to get vaccinated, too, right? I don't want to do anything until there's a vaccine, but I don't want the Trump vaccine. I want the Biden vaccine. It was made by the same people. Just a matter of who signed off on it. Personally, I had enough shit pumped into me back then that I don't really care for it. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. In addition, Dark Winter revealed that a catastrophic biowarfare event in the United States would lead to considerably reduced U.S. strategic flexibility abroad. Um, it's not necessarily pertinent currently. Fast forward to January 20th, depending on who gets inaugurated, Dark Winter revealed that a catastrophic pandemic event in the United States would lead to considerably re reduced U.S. military strategic flexibility abroad. Think about that. It's a potential. <clears throat> what else did they learn? Current organizational structures and capabilities are not well suited for the management of a bio-warfare attack. Right? Dark Winter revealed the fault lines between different levels of government, federal, state, and local. That's obvious. Um, President Trump left this up to a state's rights issue on how to handle it. Some states went full bore, tyrannical lockdown, said stay in your house, don't come out, your businesses are closed. Other ones didn't. Some municipalities within those states handled it differently as well. So it revealed major fault lines between government and private sector among different institutions and agencies and within public and private sector. That's obvious. Some areas saw diminished law enforcement response. Some areas saw flooded hospitals. Some areas saw reduction in goods and services. Leaders are unfamiliar with the character of bioterrorist, bioterrorist attack, pandemic, <clears throat> 
available policy options and their consequences. As evident, um, you had one guy left it up to the states and they showed that they are unfamiliar. Uh, how many people did Cuomo ship to nursing homes? How many people did Wolf ship to nursing homes that were COVID positive and killed a whole bunch of old people, right? Because if you're over the age of 70, your mortality rate increases exponentially. And if you're over the age of 70 with a comorbidity, your fatality rate increases exponentially. Consequences. Federal and state priorities may be unclear, differ, <clears throat> or conflict. Well, that's obvious. So, initially, the president set in a, um, a travel ban from China and most of Europe because those were the two biggest affected areas. Well, you have congressional Democrats calling him a racist, xenophobic, whatever for that, and then the Democrat presidential candidate saying, I would have done the same thing, as well as states having different directives for quarantine, different directives for health care, so on and so forth. And then now with the resurgence of it in flu season, you've got governors like El Duce Cuomo saying, hey, if you're going to come to my state and you're from one of these other states, you're going to quarantine for two weeks or you're not coming here. Hey, if you're going to come to my state for Thanksgiving or if you're going to have a Thanksgiving dinner in my state, you can only invite this many people. So, yeah. For example, state leaders wanted to control decisions regarding the imposition of disease containment measures. Example, mandatory voluntary isolation and vaccination. We just talked about that. I don't have a problem with that. Some did it better than others. The closure of state borders to all traffic and transportation. That did not happen because states can't do that. That is um, a federal government thing. Uh, they can't um, impose a travel ban state to state. <clears throat> some states tried but it didn't work out they got sued in court um, so on and so forth and airport closures there were airport closures we all know that federal officials on the other hand argued that such issues were best decided on a national basis which is the complete converse of what happened this time around This operation was designed to give the president maximum control of military and public safety assets. Think about who said we're going into a dark winter. Think about who said we're not going into a dark winter. Think about who wants control. And who wants to let each group of people sort it out as their needs fit. Leaders in states most affected by smallpox wanted immediate access to the smallpox vaccine. So let's reword that, right? Leaders in most in states most affected by COVID wanted immediate access to ventilators. New York um, wanted most immediate access to federal assistance. New York for citizens of their states, which they got, by the way. But the federal government had to balance those requests against military and other national priorities. In this case, the states got what they needed, or what they thought they needed. Pardon me. Um, right? COVID, or Cuomo, pissed him on how he wanted all these ventilators, and he got them. And then he's like, yeah, Trump's an asshole. He didn't do anything for me. <clears throat> state leaders were opposed to federalizing the National Guard, which they were relying on to support logistical and public supply needs. And they didn't federalize the National Guard. The National Guard was used on a state-by-state -state basis. Um, it was federalized as needed just because it was easier to deploy an outfit. For the most part, the National Guard stayed at a state level.
Another thing they learned, there is no surge capability in the U.S. healthcare and public health system or in the pharmaceutical and vaccine industries. I don't think that statement really requires much, um, much explanation. We're seeing it now. But we'll, we'll unpack it a little bit more. The exercise was designed to simulate the sudden and unexpected bio-warfare event, pandemic event, I like that word better, for which the United States healthcare system was unprepared. We saw this. We saw this in March and April, and we're seeing it again now. <clears throat> in the absence of sufficient preparation, Dark Winter revealed that the lack of sufficient vaccine or drugs to prevent the spread of disease severely limited management options. Of course it does, especially in a case where there's a new virus with no vaccine and the therapeutics that you need are unknown. Think about how many people died from being put on ventilators as opposed to how many people are being saved by using things like remdesivir, um, HCQ and zinc, things like that, Regeneron, and the therapeutics that are out now. Yet our numbers are still spiraling because according to uh, would-be president-elect Joe Biden, we're going into a dark winter. I hope you're, you're paying attention to what exactly a dark winter is. <clears throat> Due to institutionally limited surge capacity, the American healthcare systems, hospitals became overwhelmed and rendered effectively inoperable by the sudden and continued influx of new cases exacerbated by patients with common illness who feared they might have smallpox. We saw this at the beginning of coronavirus too. Um, basically people were told, hey, don't go to the hospital unless you have a symptom of, by the way, it's, it's lemon lime seltzer. It's not an adult beverage, in case anybody's wondering. <clears throat> don't go to the hospital unless you have XYZ symptoms. And then we have testing facilities you can go to to get a rapid test at the time. Um, Basically, don't overwhelm the hospitals with a cold, with a headache, you know, what have you. <clears throat> Challenges making correct diagnosis and rational rationing, scarce resources combined with shortage of healthcare staff, think New York, who were themselves worried about becoming infected or bringing the infection home to their families impose a huge burden on the healthcare system. Now, in the case of New York, um, the rationing wasn't so much of healthcare staff. They were flying healthcare staff in from across the country. Um, there wasn't a shortage of nurses and doctors. But what there was a shortage of was what they thought was the proper treatment, the ventilator, um, beds in the hospital with ventilators, and adequate treatment, brand new virus. Simulation also noted that while demand was highest in cities and states that had been directly attacked, exposed, we use exposed, by the time the vaccine, by the time victims became symptomatic, symptomatic, wow, they were geographically dispersed, with some having traveled far from the original site. Now think about that. The first U.S. case was somewhere in Washington State, right? Um, we're not talking about the cruise ships. We're not talking about anything like that. We're talking about the first case on U.S. soil was in a nursing home in Washington State. That spread like wildfire because people disperse. Think about on the East Coast, the city of New York. There's a lot of New Yorkers that have vacation houses in places like Connecticut, Vermont, Pennsylvania, New Jersey. As soon as they found out about this virus in the wind and you see infection numbers going up in all these other states as well. What does my note say? This already happened. The numbers are rising nationwide. We know this because people are moving, people are traveling. Um, we are up to now a free society. The one thing they're not giving you is the death rate. They're telling you, oh my God, 5,000 more cases today. How many people died? What is the death versus infection rate? 
in the case of smallpox, it's going to be a bigger number, much bigger number. In the case of what we're dealing with now, simulation also found that without sufficient surge capability, public health agencies, I think we already read this. We already read that. No, we didn't. Simulation also found that without sufficient surge capability, public health agencies' analysis of the scope, source, and progress of the epidemic was greatly impeded, as was their ability to educate and reassure the public and their capacity to limit casualties and the spread of the disease. So I want you to think about the initial COVID, right? <clears throat> we didn't have the surge capacity or surge capability. Public health agencies didn't know what they were dealing with. And that includes the CDC. Remember, um, Fauci, don't wear a mask. You don't need to wear a mask. Wear a mask. Don't wear a mask. It's airborne. It's not airborne. It's droplets. It's not droplets. It's airborne. It lives on the surfaces of things for hours. It lives on the surfaces of things for minutes. They had no idea what they were dealing with. Um, because it had never been dealt with before, right? It came out of a, um, came out of a freaking bio lab. Oh, I, did it come from a bio lab? Did it come from a fish market? It came from the bio lab, then went to the fish market, then it went out into the public. They have no idea. No idea. It came from a bio lab. For example, even after the attack was recognized, decision makers were confronted with many uncertainties and wanted information that was not immediately available. They were given more information on locations and numbers of infected people that would likely be available in reality. So that was the the um, the scenario. Without accurate and timely information, participants found it difficult to quickly identify the locations of the original outbreaks. The word in the uh, in the document is attacks. We're going to use outbreaks for the... <clears throat> think about that. The um, the gentleman in New York that taught at Yeshiva University, he came home from somewhere in Europe, took a car from the airport to his house, was driven or drove. I forget if he was driven or drove from his house in upstate New York or. Um, Westchester, no, Westchester County, to Yeshiva University. But he had no idea he had it. He had no idea he should be quarantined for it because it wasn't in Europe at the time, or it wasn't known to be in Europe at the time. There was no travel ban to that part of Europe at the time. He infected his whole family and basically set loose a chain reaction on the East Coast. Never knew he did it. To immediately predict the likely size of the epi epidemic on basis of initial cases. <clears throat> Depending on who modeled it, they may or may not have got it right. To know how many people were exposed, to find out how many people were hospitalized and where, or to keep track of how many had been vaccinated. Well, we're going to eliminate the, um, the vaccinated part at this point because there's, there's still no vaccine. Maybe come January, when we go into a dark winter, there will be. Think about that. Dealing with the media will be a major immediate challenge for all levels of government. Think about the media hype. We're not talking about smallpox right now. We're done with smallpox. Think about the media hype that we've seen on this virus. They're playing right into, they played right into the hand of, oh my God, you're all going to die. Panic to the point you couldn't find toilet paper on the shelves in stores, right? 
Dark Winter revealed that information management and communication, i.e. dealing with the press effectively, communications with the citizens, maintaining information flows necessary for command and control of all institutional levels will be a critical element in crisis consequence management. Think about the media. The media has been hostile toward President Trump from day one. They have... Uh, they haven't cut the guy a break. They've been out his throat. Think about how they were through the whole coronavirus thing. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? We're going to put a travel ban in place. You're a racist. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? We're going to get New York whatever they, they need. We're going to get Washington whatever they need. We're going to get all these places whatever they need, but they just need to ask for it. We didn't get what we need. Mr. President, this governor says you were no help. Mr. President, there's people dying. Mr. President, the infection rates are rising and you won't wear a mask. Mr. President, Think about it. Think about it. Think about socially distance. Don't socially distance. Wear a mask. Don't wear a mask. I remember the onset of um, the coronavirus, and that was don't wear a mask. I was wearing a mask back then when I was around the public, around people I didn't know. Um, knowing what I know now, eh, I'm over it. Um, if I'm around a bunch of people I don't know, yeah, I'll put one on, but I don't, I don't see it as being a life-saving measure at this point. Um, but that's my uneducated knowledge. My job has a policy where when I'm out of my vehicle and dealing with the, uh, the residents and the citizens and whatnot, Face diaper up. So, that's what I do. Um, but the media is more of, like, a shamer if you choose not to. They're, they've turned it into a, um, a political statement at this point, if you will, rather than a choice. To gain cooperation, the president and other leaders in Dark Winter recognized the importance of persuading their constituents that there was fairness in the distribution of the vaccine and other scarce resources. So what we're seeing now is disinformation, basically. You're seeing state governors saying, I don't want the Trump vaccine. I don't trust the Trump vaccine. Don't take the Trump vaccine. Well, it was made by companies like Pfizer. It was made by companies like Regeneron made by big name drug companies. If you think the president was sitting in the basement of the White House with a medicine dropper and a beaker and some test tubes and a Bunsen burner making a vaccine, you're out of your mind. So what you're seeing is <clears throat> disinformation and a reverse psyop by the media and by other government officials to meet their needs. 20 years ago, Right? This was all war gamed out 20 years ago. Disease containment measures were for the general good of society, that all possible measures were being taken to prevent further spread of the disease, and that the government remained firmly in control despite the expanding epidemic. You're being told the complete opposite by the media. But again, we already established they have their own agenda. They need panic. They need distrust for their agenda. We're going into a dark winter. No, Joe, we're not going into a dark winter. You be the judge. In dark winter, should a contagious pathogen be released? I'm done reading it this way, in case you haven't figured it out. Um, the spread of the disease will present significant ethical, political, cultural, operational, and legal challenges. Some members advised the imposition of geographic quarantines around affected areas, but the implications of these measures 
i.e. interruption of normal flow of medicines, food, energy supplies, and other critical needs were not clearly understood at first. In other words, you can't impose a federal quarantine of a certain area because if you do, then you can't get the goods and services and keep that area running sufficiently, right? If you put a geographical quarantine on a federal level on the city of New York, and we use them for an example because they're the closest big city to me, um, you put a geographical quarantine, uh, a federal quarantine on it, nobody in, nobody out, where does the garbage go? How does the sewage get treated? How does the water get treated? And if you've been to New York, the water doesn't get treated. The sewage goes in the streets, the garbage goes in the streets, and nobody really cares at this point. It's a damn shame. In the end, it's not clear whether such draconian measures would have led to a more effective interruption of disease spread. So, I'm going to go with no. Because there will always be people that break quarantine, right? Unless you hold them at gunpoint. You cannot contain a city the size of New York with, how do I want to word this? You cannot contain a city the size of New York without using overwhelming force, right? How many bridges and tunnels in and out? How many railway lines in and out? And then there's the big old river that you can just paddle your way across. When I used to actually go to New York City, you could see people paddling across the Hudson River from New York to Hoboken. And if you tell me I'm wrong, I'm going to call you a liar. <laughs> because I've seen it. So basically, the long and short of that is our current president didn't want to impose these draconian measures. He let the states take care of it the way they wanted to. Some did it better than others. Right? He took care of an international quarantine, but he said, California, do California. Texas, do Texas. Pennsylvania, do Pennsylvania. New York, do New York. Some states did better than others. <clears throat> the incoming, the projected president-elect has already made it clear that he wants to institute a six-week lockdown of the entire country. What this operation didn't take into consideration is what I have here in my notes. Things like crime, right? Domestic violence, child abuse, drug use, property crime on the rise. I mean, we've seen property crime on the rise in the mob violence in the cities, but hey, we're quarantined, we can't get out of our house, you have food, we don't. You have heat, we don't. And believe me when I tell you, a domestic abuser that's stuck in the house with their spouse, or a child abuser that's stuck in the house with their children, is going to accelerate that abuse. A drug user that's stuck in the house is going to use a lot of drugs. And when he doesn't have those drugs to use, it's going to be interesting how he decides to get them. Things like shortages. Food being the biggest one. The trucks stop running. Your grocery store uses an on-time delivery system. In three days, your grocery store is empty. In three hours, there, were no, there was no toilet paper in your grocery store the last time we did something like this. What about power outages? If your power workers are quarantined in one area, and the power station is in an area that they're not quarantined in, who keeps the lights on? Who keeps this wonderful little internet of ours running? Food for thought, right? Service shortages. Police, fire, and ambulance. If you 
quarantine the cops who's coming to friggin who's coming to save you when the druggie breaks in. If you quarantine the cops who's coming to save you when your domestic when your wife beating spouse starts beating his wife or his children. Just things to think about. So that's Operation Dark Winter. Um, now that maybe you have an idea of it and a little analysis of it on my end, hopefully you can gather and process when Vice President Biden looked at President Trump and said, we're going into a dark winter. And President Trump looked at him and said, no, Joe, we're not going into a dark winter. They knew exactly what they were talking about. They knew exactly what they were talking about because they would have both been briefed on that as current president and former vice president. So in a moment of clarity between Alzheimer's, Joe blurted that out and maybe some people picked it up, maybe some people didn't. Anyway, if you liked the video, hit the thumbs up, share it, subscribe to the channel, more to come. See you in the next one. You all have a great day.